I think this last pick from Heretics was completely in. I'm just going to say it. I just think it was dog. I can see why you're picking Kassadin into, into Azir and, uh, and Sejuani. But they're playing Braum, Sejuani, Azir, Jax, uh, Zeri. Are you f***ing cooked? I mean, he's like, he, I can see his logic, you know? I can see his logic because they have a double AP mid jungle and a Braum. And you're going Merc Treads probably or something. I don't know. So you're probably like, wow, I can get a lot of value here in terms of like raw stats. But then you realize you're playing like one of the shortest range AD carries uh, and four melee champs into Sejuani Braum. Like you can't move. Uh, to be honest, I think, like, I think I said it on the cast. I think Talia here is really good. I, I, I just think Talia is good here. Like it's so good. Like how, I don't understand how, how they can get on top of your Kalista in a team fight if Talia is just standing there pressing her fucking Q and E button around the dragon. They just can't move. None of them can move. They're going to throw an ult with Sejuani and nothing will happen. Nothing. And also, you can actually push in midwaves a little bit and lean to your bot lane. So the Braum lane that is going to get pushed in by the Kalista Nautilus, maybe you can do something with it, you know? I just think that Kassadin is just absolute alt F4 here. If I see another comp in EU with Kassadin Kalista on it, I'm going to fucking mold. I just think Kassadin Kalista is terrible together. Hey guys, it's Kajal. Uh, I'm going to be pumping out loads of YouTube content, but I noticed that a lot of you aren't subscribed. There's going to be a graphic somewhere. Maybe my editor puts it up. Uh, but if you could subscribe, it really helps. Uh, I really appreciate all the support on the videos recently. I'll try to be covering all the uh, major regions across the world as much as I can. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching the videos. Enjoy! Bitch. Koi played it, yeah, and they almost lost. They almost lost like three times. It's just, it, like, they stop fucking picking that dog shit. Koi made it work. Just because they won, it doesn't mean that it worked. You know? You know the reason that they won that game? You know the reason that they won that game with Kalista and fucking Kassadin? was because of Soraka. If they didn't have Soraka, that game was instantly lost. I can tell you that for a fact. Soraka solo carried that game. Trimby legend. And even then it was hard. Even then it was almost lost. Almost. Now I'm not a big Soraka advocate, you know? I don't think Soraka's that OP. But in that game, Soraka was completely broken. But I don't know, I have this feeling about the LEC right now. That the league is just pretty stacked. I don't know, I just have this feeling that every team has something about them. Apart from SK, Astralis, and maybe BDS, every team just has something about them. Like XL, can they do it? You know, Mad's pretty hype. They fucking, I think Mad is like the dark horse. Team Heretics, you know, good old Yanko. Vitality, fucking Boeing. Boeing 747, absolute flying them to worlds right now. Yeah, Photon is also insane. I've seen every, every single fucking Jax, the same thing has happened to them against Cassante and the ADC. Q3 into pushback into tower. I've seen this so many times. Uh, this is where I just like, I was on the cast and I was just like slightly mind blown on the cast. My head was just like stun locked for a second. But just imagine, imagine you had Talia. Imagine, imagine you had, oh my, imagine you had Talia. This, this waves were pushed in because you're not playing Cassidy. Oh my god, you just have like some right clicks down here. Just threaten some threaten some plays. Brown no E, Zeri's half HP, level 3 to level 2. Uh, <laughs> so this, I was so dizzy. So there's a ward on Sejuani, right? Kassadin runs away because he knows Sejuani's topside. But then he runs back. This wave is crashed. Like, these two range minions don't do anything. Perks can't hold it. Yankos can maybe E him, you know, push him back a bit. Like, I don't think Kassadin being here is going to crash this. It maybe it holds here with range creeps. But anyway, it's just so confusing when he does because he runs back. Yeah, so I'm a bit confused because then Bo just comes in and just presses Q, which doesn't even oh, get flashed, oh. by the way. Like, maybe if Ruby flashed the Q, he can live. Nice. And then Ruby dies. And if Perks just doesn't die here, like, the game is won. Like, Perks doesn't need to WE here. Because he's just jumping on top of Wukong's face. And he just kind of gives him a kill. Which was really lucky for Team Heretics, that they also have Mercy here too. Like if Vitality wasn't super greedy here, I think it's a horror. But uh, yeah, I mean Heretics got away with it, I guess. I don't think this is something they should have got away with. Yanko smite the minion for the Nautilus hook. Oh, Yankos, you beautiful fucker. That was actually really clean. That was so clean by Yankos. Smites the creep to give him a flash hook. I didn't even see that. Wow, I wish I saw that on the cast. I didn't see that. I didn't see that on the cast. Wow, that was crazy. I always like to pick up on the small things in the cast, but I didn't pick up on that. A lot of mid-wave contests, it seems. But they like, like heretics, have, heretics have so much bot push this game, but there's just nothing to do with it, it feels like. 
because they have one one that's a cast in lane that they have they, they can't kill it feels like yeah i don't think they can kill jacks either they get drake i just i just think heretics comp is so bad i just i just want to fucking i just want to fist something right now i hate it i hate this comp so much it just triggers me like vi vi Cassante, fine the rest absolute dog shit but i say vi i meant wukong I mean, the problem is the enemy team has Zeri, Zeri Azir, so their scaling is crazy, and they have so much, like, so much natural counter in terms of kit from their champions. I was also surprised Yankos didn't ult here. I was a bit surprised why he doesn't ult. I mean, I think he's saving it for Herald, but I don't understand why here he doesn't just E ult, and then W ult is... Pog, let's go, man. I guess he knows he has jump, so he's scared that as Chat he ults... Give me an XDD. I think the, the reason is because he's scared that if he ults here, and then he gets knocked up, and Jax will just queue away after the knockup, and they won't get the kill. Mm, which is also fine, I guess. Just chunk him out and try to fight Harold. But I, I feel like they need their bot lane if they want to fight Harold. They don't need to chunk top. Like, look at bot situation. Zeri, Braum is first. This is the reason they're losing Harold. It's not because of top chunk. Like, what happened bot? I would love to see the camera down there, because the wave's coming in and Kalista is right on top of it. But it looks like Braum right clicks them and they're scared. Maybe they don't have information on jungle. And by the time they didn't have information on jungle, they gave up the wave. And then, uh, yeah, they're running top now. So I think this is the reason they lose Herald. I don't know, I have a lot of thoughts about like how teams are working right now. I mean, obviously G2 looks like the best team. But I think that the way that G2 is playing the game... When G2 plays the game, it always feels like there's a plan somewhere. Like, it always feels like something's cooking, or something's in the works, or they're working on something, or there's an idea that they're playing towards. These games just kind of feel like ifs, buts, and maybes, you know? And I guess a League of Legends is kind of like that, you know? You try plays. If they do this, then we'll do this. Maybe if they do that, we'll do that. I feel like Heretics' comp just makes it so, like, what, what, what are they supposed to do? Here's our three oh, melee champs go, and our Nautilus. We're going to press our hook onto Braum, and he's going to put his shield up. And now we're all fucking useless, unless we flank. Hmm, great. Now we have to hit the full tank Sejuani. Let's try to kill that guy. Ah, wait, we realized that even if we kill him, we can still lose the fight. So let's go on to the Azir. And Yankos does good. And now I get pushed back. And now we're all on top of each other again. And we achieved nothing. So let's go deeper. Ah, oh, shit. Now they have more damage than us and we're dead. Great. And that's just going to happen for the rest of the game. And it's only going to get worse. It's just, it's just, it's just like, there's just a draft gap. Every solo kill top, which is great. But, I mean, the only thing that matters this game is fi team fights. to be honest. There's no real macro in this game that matters, you know? I don't think like, either team can do any insane macro play that's going to get them a big lead. They just cross map with Herald, they put their bot lane top, avoid, take uh, tier 1 for tier 1. Then they threaten the top tier 2 here, which was smart by Vitality, because they have Herald, and instead of going for top tier 2, they bail, so they can reset and get the Drake, and they can kind of match them. But here is like the only team fight that Heretics win. And the only reason they win this team fight is because Vitality kind of int. Look at that. That's the situation that they just had, right? And they lose this. They lose this fight if Vitality don't int. Okay. Photon dies. Neon flashes over the wall. If Neon doesn't do that, they win. I think Neon went too deep there. Got a little bit cocky. But if Neon doesn't flash over there, he can just chase with Bow onto Yankos and Evi and Jack Spectra, get their sums. They would win. They would probably win this fight easy. But because Neon goes in and dies, it's close. Even when Neon dies, Vitality can still win this fight. The fight, the only reason that they lose even harder is because not only is their first carry Neon, who just abandoned them and died, but now their second carry will do the same. <laughs> so now their, their supportive champs are like, they, they, there's nothing to do. So heretics win that fight because the carry split a bit, right? But I can kind of understand why they split because if they didn't chase, then the fight would end. And then you go to the next fight where it's like, okay, this is uh, one minute later. Now if we all just stand together in a massive fucking chest pit against these four melee champs with Azir and Zeri just standing there, pressing their right clicks, then I don't think we can lose. And you're right. You can't lose. The only way heretics can ever win a fight is if you split up or they flank you. And there was no flank. They need like a, they need like Yankos. They need like Yankos and Ruby to somehow. Uh, I don't know. They 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 kind of need like Yankos and Ruby like up here somewhere, or like Ruby here, Yankos here. I think in LCK you'll often see team fights where jungle top, uh, like a jungle top slash jungle a bot are just kind of sitting here, 
and there's two people on either side and when they walk into a funnel they get just pincered kind of right but if you just if you're playing with these four mini champs and you're just running at them in a straight line then it's just it's so easy for zeri and yumi uh, zeri and azir to just stand here Pork, what is threatening so them there's nothing they can't just run past them forehead it doesn't work like that you can't just dive over them then you're in the middle of everyone and you just die so i just feel like their their team fighting is just it's they they have two two options one is enemy mistake one is their own play and they didn't neither, neither happens so i mean i think if you if you're an avid lck or an lpl watcher or even some lec teams you'll always see this dragon like pincer thing especially with champions like wukong or vi maokai mm, kassadin leblanc nar aatrox these are champs that normally do that quite often it's always like the the bot lane especially that sits around the dragon like here they're like this is how little damage they have this is their mid jungle bow is full tank what do you think fanatic have to do to win today versus koi not fight draven level three and then yeah i i, I don't really want to go too much more into this game because it's now doomed because you have a situation in a game where the enemy team is like 6k gold down and they get outscaled. So not only do they get outscaled like in individual roles in a sense and damage, but also get outscaled in like just raw team fights. And this is a composition that like it only gets worse to deal with for champs like Kassin and Wukong. So yeah, it was a good game. It was a good game by Vitality overall. Vitality looking good. I think for me, like the top teams oh, right now look like G2, Vit, and Koi, uh, and Mad. Streams. I actually think Mad is pretty good.